several information items and the latest they are, I'll be brief. Uh, the first is the Florida Regional Council Association activity report. On page 95 is the activities for the month of April for Denise Emler, our statewide coordinator over in Tallahassee with the Appalachian Regional Council. I sent out the electronic newsletter for March of 2019. Uh, also uh, coordinated the Executive Director's Advisory Committee meeting we had in Tallahassee uh, in April, as well as uh, been tracking bills throughout the legislative session, keeping us informed of activity in the legislature, and working with the Florida Association of Counties, Florida League Cities, American Plan Association for uh, exhibiting at their upcoming conferences this summer and fall. Uh, next is the Florida Chamber Foundation scorecard. Uh, scorecard begins on page 99. Just touching a couple quick highlights there. Uh, unemployment, as you know, is uh, at a 50-year low, 3.5%. Uh, uh, job creation has slowed down a little bit, only 209,000 jobs, which is still a very healthy creation over the year. Uh, tourism remains strong, 126 million visitors, $111 billion industry, our number one industry in the state. Uh, housing starts uh, are on the rise, as well as uh, sales. Uh, high school graduation continues to improve, up to 86%. And right direction, wrong direction, 54% of Floridians think we're headed in the right direction, and 25% heading we're in the wrong direction. I'm not sure where the other 20 or 25% stand. Next is a legislative report. Uh, I want to report a couple of bills we were tracking and a couple uh, that did uh, pass the legislature I want to report on. Uh, first, this is on page 113, the State Housing Trust Fund bills to add this trust fund to a trust fund that could not be swept. And those funds used for other purposes uh, did not pass the legislature. Uh, so that uh, continues to be a challenge. Not all the dollars dedicated to affordable housing are going for affordable housing purposes. Uh, the on-site sewage treatment plant requirement of uh, inspection of septic tanks and the maintenance of those uh, did not pass. The growth management bills by uh, Senator Perry and Representative McLean related to requiring a private property element to local and comprehensive plans did not pass. Two bills that did pass, um, one that issue has been before the legislature for the past two or three sessions, uh, community redevelopment agencies. Uh, House Bill 9 did pass and does uh, basically three things. Requires community redevelopment agency uh, board members, most of which are city and or county commissioners, but some jurisdictions have citizen appointees as well, to require them to complete four hours of ethics training, which all elected officials are required to uh, complete each year. Uh, in the area of transparency, requires them to put on their websites the digital maps of their current community redevelopment area boundaries, their annual report, and annual audit. And the third thing it does is sunsets all existing community redevelopment agencies in the state of Florida by 2039 or sooner if their existing authorization uh, would occur before then. However, it does provide for the local governing body, the city commission or county commission, by a majority vote to reestablish those redevelopment areas uh, after that sunset date with the requirement that they make a new finding of necessity and determine that the areas still qualify as slum and blight. Uh, so that's the basic uh, House Bill 9 uh, legislation that did pass, passed the House 81 to 30, and passed the Senate 36 to 1. The other bill, is the one a number of citizens commented on this evening was Senate Bill 7068. This was the priority of Senate President uh, Senator Galvano. Establishes the multi use corridors of regional economic significance program. It passed the Senate by 37 to 1, passed the House by 76 to 36. Uh, the bill does several things. It directs the Florida Department of Transportation to study uh, several uh, multi use corridors. Uh, one that would connect uh, the northern terminus of the turnpike to the uh, Suncoast Parkway. Uh, second corridor would be from Polk County to Naples in southwest Florida. And the third corridor would be a northerly extension of the Suncoast Parkway uh, coming north uh, through parts of our region uh, to I-10 and ultimately to the Georgia Line. Each of the task forces will have a task force appointed by the Secretary of Department of Transportation He's required to make those appointments by August 1st. There will be representatives from the Department of Environmental Protection, Department of Economic Opportunity, Education, Health, Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, Ag and Community Services, Water Management Districts, 
regional planning councils, local government elected officials in the jurisdictions, metropolitan planning organizations, community members, and environmental groups. Uh, these task forces are charged with uh, evaluating the need, economic and environmental impact, hurricane evacuation impacts, and land use impacts of these multi-use corridors. There's a requirement that the task force hold at least one public meeting in each jurisdiction, which the corridor would uh, traverse. Uh, their report is due October 1st of next year, 2020. So a very short timeline, a little bit over here, uh, to report to the President of the Senate, Speaker of the House, the Governor, and the Secretary of Transportation. Uh, the bill states that it's the maximum extent feasible that construction should begin in these corridors by December of 2022, with completion of the corridors by December of 2030. The legislation also calls for appropriation of fiscal 20, which begins July 1st, uh, appropriation of $45 million, 12 and a half, which would be for these quarter studies. An additional $10 million into the small county road uh, assistance program, additional $12 million into the small county outreach program, an additional $12 million into the transportation disadvantage program, and $2.5 million to workforce. And then in fiscal 21 through 2030, it calls for appropriation of $90 million a year for uh, construction of these quarters. So that's the process that will be undertaken over the next uh, year to year and a half. And uh, the Secretary will say making appointments of elected officials from each of the jurisdictions. Uh, most likely uh, the tentative broad quarters that were designated uh, in the backup information for the bill uh, would come through uh, Levy, Dixie, Taylor, and then up through Jefferson County. But the actual route has yet to be determined. Uh, that's going to be the charge of the uh, task force for each of the quarters. And the last item I want to report on is the special project appropriation that the Regional Council Association requested of $1.2 million to begin the statewide update of the hurricane evacuation study, primarily the behavioral study, of how individuals would respond if they were ordered to evacuate. Would they stay in place? Uh, would they evacuate to uh, shelter with uh, family or friends? Or would they evacuate to commercial hotels or motels or when they need public shelter or assistance. That appropriation uh, did pass both the House and Senate and is in the uh, final budget that has not yet been submitted to the governor. Uh, once the governor receives the budget, he will have 15 days to either sign the budget as adopted or exercise his line item veto in certain items uh, that he doesn't agree with in the budget. So he's not yet received the budget, so we'll know another few weeks of whether that passes the uh, review of the governor. Last item is uh, a reminder to everyone, uh, financial disclosure. Uh, reports are due uh, July 1st. You should be receiving one shortly in the mail from your local supervisor election. Uh, needs to be completed and filed by July 1st. There is a short grace period. Uh, but after that, there is a daily late fee fine uh, that takes effect. So I want to encourage you to uh, complete those reports and submit those on a timely basis. For elected city and county commissioners, you do not need to do any further reporting other than to report your file as elected official. Gubernatorial appointees, uh, administrative staff, and the council are required to submit the financial disclosure as members of the Regional Planning Council. So, Mr. Chair, uh, before I conclude, I do want to mention uh, two staff members were not able to be with us this evening. Uh, Senior Planner Lynn Francis Godfrey, who coordinates all the transportation disadvantage program work we do with counties across North Florida, is currently on vacation. And also our Director of Public Safety and Regulatory Programs, uh, Dwayne Mundy, who I've reported to you on in the past, uh, has been hospitalized for the last six months. Uh, the past several weeks he's been in a rehabilitation facility, uh, was transferred to another facility this week, uh, is undergoing rehabilitation and is looking forward to hopefully being released from uh, rehab in the next few weeks. And we are very much uh, looking forward to Wayne's return to our office, at least initially on a part-time basis. I'm going to miss him very much. Please continue to keep him in your thoughts and prayers. He's had a very difficult uh, six months, and he has a very difficult road of recovery ahead, but we're hopeful he's going to be able to join us uh, very soon. So with that, before we conclude, we have one other order of business, uh, Mr. Chairman. This is your last official meeting as chair.